It is time for Night Court Round 1. On the docket this week, can the students of Covington Catholic, who've been criticized in the mainstream media and all over social media, actually sue for libel? Now, some of them say they and their families have been threatened, dragged through the mud, and portrayed in a completely false light. But do pundits, reporters, and celebrities who've expressed their own take on the viral video have the right to say what they want? Or could they now be facing legal liability? Let's talk about it with our legal eagles tonight. Remember, you're the jury. Employment attorney at Phillips & Associates, Sylvia Stanchu, and the president and general counsel for the National Center for Life and Liberty, David Gibbs. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Honored to be with you tonight. Okay, I want to read something from L. Lynn Wood, who is a very prominent attorney who has handled some of these really big libel cases. Uh, he's going to be representing Nick Salmon. He says this, In the coming weeks, we will be carefully reviewing all of the false allegations and threats made against Nick. We fully expect that a multitude of civil lawsuits will be filed and aggressively pursued. Sylvia, who should be worried? At this point, we have to recognize that Social media and journalism are inherently intertwined. Uh, going to war against journalism is very is concerning, and uh, it at this point anyway. Uh, while Mr. Sandeman may have a cause of action or a number of causes of action to pursue uh, based on this very unfortunate situation, we cannot go to war against media. We cannot go to war against people's right to express their opinions freely. That is something that is inherent in, in our nation, mm -hmm. and, and that is something that, uh, that he did himself. Uh, during during those unfortunate events uh, in Washington that day. Yeah, and there are a lot of people weighing in. Uh, one um, well-known legal uh, commentator says this, uh, under the headline, Libel Laws in the Covington Voice says, they may well be damaged, this is Exhibit B tonight in our case, by the controversy as a whole, but that doesn't mean they can show such damage stemming from a particular defendant's speech. They would therefore need to claim presumed or punitive damages. That requires more or a less d a deliberate lie not just a negligent mistake. I mean, David, can they rise to that level? Well, I think possibly, Shannon, they certainly could. And I think we need to recognize that reputation should not just be disposable by journalists in this Internet era. Uh, in this case, you don't have the president or the Speaker of the House or a public figure. You have teenagers. And when you look at people giving their opinions, we certainly allow that under our First Amendment. But when you look at an ongoing defamation where false statements are being made, where they're being labeled as terrorists or troublemakers in this Internet era, that's a branding that the journalists should be held responsible for. They're making money off these hits. They're making money off this publicity. And when they destroy people's lives or put them at risk, they should be held accountable under the law. Okay, now to Exhibit C. This is attorney Robert Barnes, who was on with us on Fox News at night the other night. He may represent some of the other students. Here's what he said. And while this may be a precedent-setting case, it is a necessary precedent-setting case because there need to be consequences when people abuse and misuse their power and privilege of the press to take after ordinary, innocent, private kids and falsely libel them with lies and defamation. I want you both to weigh in because this could be a new precedent. Sylvia, first with you. We have to take into account the fact that uh, while Mr. Sandeman may pursue this case moving forward, he has a massive hurdle ahead of him. How do you sue every single person who weighed in on a situation as it was happening in real time? And how do you really demonstrate what those damages are? How do you quantify that? He has, unfortunately, a, a very lengthy legal battle ahead of him if he plans on going one after the other, each, each of those individuals who may have made comments mm -hmm. or, or written articles that at the time they were watching happen in real time and fulfilling their duty as reporters most of the time, uh, talking about what happened and, and exposing the situation as it was going on, even if they were not in the field themselves. All right, David, final argument to you. These teenagers are not going to sue everybody. They'll sue the journalists that were irresponsible and defame them and put their names, their reputations, and even in some cases their very lives at risk. And I do think we need to be looking at holding the standard higher to protect innocent people from being maligned. The Internet never goes away. Their children and grandchildren that aren't even born yet will be reading about this. The journalists making money off it ought to be held accountable. All right, David and Sylvia, you have made your cases. We have seen the exhibits. Folks at home, you are the jury. Tweet us your verdict at Shannon Bream or at Fox News Night. Thank you both. Thank you.
Thank you, Shannon.